Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today, we have some malicious compliance stories. And our first story of the day is by Conscious Teabag. You want to wait three weeks to display your products? Fine by me. I worked for a very long time for a toy store. I then moved out of state and found another toy store to work at and was the assistant manager there as well. I thought the atmosphere would be the same. I was very wrong. It was a cool place to work. I loved interacting with the kids and working customer service. Aside from the occasional Karen, all was good. Now once, we got a huge shipment and a lot of it was cute little dolls that are quite expensive and hail from France. The display was super cute, but it was one of those easy assembly cardboard contraptions that was supposed to be held together by these pushpin rivets. No big deal. I built a lot of toys and displays in my time. I start organizing everything and notice the baggie of rivets is missing. Again, no big deal, I am a flexible person and was taught to keep pushing no matter what. So I found the world's smallest zip ties that we had on hand and noticed that they were the same size as the little holes and would work perfectly. Now all would have been fine except Big Boss. Tim, name changed, was very particular about how he wants the stores to look and be organized. Read Nitpicky. He so happened to be in the store that night and he told me to contact the doll people to let them know I needed this one set of very small pieces and not to build this display until we had those to keep the look of the display. I tried telling him that I had previous experience from my other toy store with this particular company, and while they were great at shipping things out, sometimes their displays took forever to ship out. However, he cut me off and told me to just wait for the part and don't build it until it comes in, okay? So I said okay. Many co-workers came up to me and asked why there was all this new product sitting back there, and I told them what happened and they studiously ignored the dolls as they too had just about had enough of Tim's nitpicking. Thing is, without this display, we did not have the room for this new product. The purpose of the display was to have a freestanding area that would be available to display these beautiful little angels. Otherwise, they had absolutely no place to be put. I tried asking him again the following week, when he came in for two minutes to drop off something, if I should just build a display because the dolls were not out and thus causing us to lose out on sales. But again, I was cut off and told to just wait without letting me finish my sentence. He then left as he was in a hurry. A couple more days go by and he finally has time to stop by and look around and he asks how the dolls have been selling as he did not see them out. Have we sold out? I proceeded to lead him back to the stock room and show him the area I had so beautifully arranged for all of the precious little dolls as well as a very detailed note with contact dates for the company regarding the rivets. So you haven't put them out? Tim, you said not to build the display without the rivets. I tried showing you my alternative, but you said to just wait for them, and so we are still waiting. But they need to sell, these are new. Without the display, we just don't have the space. I suppose I could take something else off the floor and put them out if you want. Build the display with zip ties. Once the rivets get here, we can just replace them. Note, this is exactly what I had recommended before. So I did as I was told and finally sold many of the cute little dolls, but definitely not as many as could have been sold earlier. Tim was very upset as he did not like being wrong and hated when anyone stood up to his ridiculous requests or offered any suggestions. He soon learned that I kind of knew what I was talking about, but I did end up quitting shortly after because he was just a pill to work for. And he never took any of my suggestions, still running Windows 99 and no hopes for an update anytime soon last I heard. As a person outside of his payroll, he's a cool dude. But working for him is just a whole other can of beans. In situations like this where people are so matter-of-factly or just very clear-cut on what they want you to do, do you feel it's better to just go along with them and let them fall on their own butt? Or do you think it's better to try and stand up for it and point out the problem with their direction? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Mike underscore Oxenfire. I don't work here, lady. But yeah, I'll be your server. This happened to a friend of mine who I shall call Steve, although that isn't his real name. Steve works in a hardware slash DIY store in a retail park. 
where there are loads of shops and restaurants surrounded by a large car park. He has a lunch break at about 1 p.m. every day for an hour, during which time he normally gets a sandwich or something quick, simple and cheap. On this particular day, back in 2017, he'd arranged to meet his girlfriend for lunch at one of the nearby restaurants, and had even ordered the meal in advance. So weekends they'd arrived and they'd be served pretty quickly. He'd been to the restaurant many times and knew the manager and the waitstaff pretty well. Cast as Steve, Steve's girlfriend Sarah, not her real name, Karen, entitled customer, and the waiting staff. Steve and Sarah had finished their meal and paid the bill, and now Sarah had gone to the toilet, so Steve is just waiting for her. There are only a handful of customers at this time. Then Karen walks in with her kids. She spots an empty table next to Steve's table and notices that he is in a uniform. She sits down, gets her kids settled, while Steve is just staring out the window breaks over back to work then she yaps clapping her hands together to get his attention steve panics suddenly thinking he's been there too long and he's actually late he checks his watch and realizes that it's only half one and he still has 30 minutes sorry he says i've got half an hour left on my break and but she cuts him off saying with a raised voice well you can take my order and go back to your break hop to it while aggressively swiping at him but missing it suddenly dawns on Steve that Karen thinks he works in the restaurant and starts to explain that he doesn't work there, getting as far as, but I don't, before being cut off again. Karen shouts, I don't care if you work on your break, I want my order now, and fails again to swipe at him. Cue malicious compliance. Steve carries a notepad and pen with him as they occasionally help him in his job. He whips these out, stands up and says, yeah, sure, why not? As he does this, he's gesturing to the waitstaff to not come to the table for a minute or two, and they are giggling as they've worked out what he's up to. Even the manager, who's heard Karen shouting, has cottoned on and is watching. Steve listens to Karen's order while writing on his pad. Except he isn't writing her order, but a bunch of random words. At that moment, Sarah returns, stopping halfway to the table and sees Steve is up to some shenanigans, and that the waitstaff and at least a couple of customers are all watching. Steve finishes taking the order and turns around, intending to go back to his break and sit down, just to piss Karen off. But he sees Sarah and instead walks towards her. She already has her bag and no jacket anyway, being as it is summer, and rather flamboyantly says, Are you ready to go, darling? and proceeds to walk straight out of the restaurant, turning around to see Karen, still sat down, staring daggers at him, and tears off her order from his pad, and throws it in the bin by the door. Unfortunately, that's where the story ends, so I don't know in detail how Karen reacted to that, but the waitstaff said she went to the bin to dig out her order, shouted profanities at everyone, and left without ordering. I'm really curious if it was just random words or if OP's friend left a nice little message for the Karen on that piece of paper. If it was, I wonder what it would say. This next story is by Perv Dragon. Want me to wear a lab coat every time? Got it. So this is a story from a close friend of mine. I got his approval to share this and I'm going to write it as close as how he told me. So we have a chemistry lab class. It is for starters to learn how to behave in a lab. Our teacher is the famous Mallory, name changed. She is famous for acting like she is handling nuclear weapons in class. As an example, we had an experiment about how to use a thermometer. It was just adding ice to water and measuring temperature on that experiment. Because someone took off their glasses to clean it, she started yelling. Other than that, she was kinda okay. You can imagine the type. I'm at my junior year, but because my grades were so low that I had to take some classes again, so I can graduate without having to get AA from every new class. With the three year of experience in labs, I was standing out because I know how to do things. There is a huge difference between someone who never touched a Bunsen burner and a junior chemistry major. So we started class and weeks passed by. After some point she said, Okay, I know why you are here. If you don't want to spend two hours every week in this class watching me teach newbies how to not kill themselves, yep, she actually said that, I can excuse you for the rest of my term and give you AA. But you have to help me carry new equipment to the lab this weekend. It may sound good, but lab has a freak ton of equipment, and because someone in the board wanted to check up for every equipment, 
We have to disassemble everything and box them, and after that, we have to assemble everything after they came back from inspection. Disassembling part was done, but now I had to assemble everything back. I started with ovens. As some of you may know, they are heavy as heck. After putting one in place, Mallory came and said, Why are you not in lab gear? And only gear was a lab coat and glasses. I said, Because I'm carrying stuff and I'm not handling any chemicals or anything. Mallory says, You should wear lab gear even if you are just stepping inside the lab. Now gear up. I say, But I'm not. I said gear up. She started to supervise me. I had to earn that AA, so I geared up and placed the other ovens. After some while, it was time for glassware. I went to take that box, but apparently someone took the box and put burettes, long glass tubes, on a near table. Darn cats taking our boxes. Now I had to carry 30 burettes twice a time. Now here comes the good part. As a part of lab policy, we were not allowed to leave lab with gear on us, so I had to leave my coat and glasses every time I step out of the room. So I started doing it, taking two glass tubes, going to the lab, putting them near me, gearing up, putting glasses two meters away from the door on a table, going to the door, taking out gear, taking two more glasses, and so on. After second loop, she said, what are you doing? I can't leave lab with gear. I can't enter lab without gear. So I'm carrying everything according to the safety rules. She got angry, started yelling at me, and after some time she said, I don't care how, you have two more hours to put everything in place. I'm leaving now, see you in two hours. Well, without thick coats and big glasses, it took less than one hour. I got my AA and never went to that lab again. As a note, it is extremely rare that someone had to take freshman classes in junior year. So this became some kind of meme in our uni. Mallory is somebody that seems to play a little too much by the book. I guess I get the glasses at least if you're handling like a bunch of glassware or anything like that. But if you're not handling chemicals, why do you need the lab coat? I don't understand that. Our next story is by Sphinxy Tuck Paws. Every staff member must have a name badge. I worked as a supervisor for a frontline staffing company for trade shows. We worked for dozens of them and would register people, print name badges, check people in, or sometimes just print tickets. Our staff was filled with retirees in their 70s and 80s and a handful of young actors and actresses who needed a side gig. It was minimum wage and as supervisor, I got $1 more per hour. Normally we worked corporate shows, but the company decided to expand their services to include consumer shows. One particular event was not communicated to our staff in advance. It was a sex and porn trade show. Booths full of sex toys, porn, erotica. It was very salacious and having made the trek out to the convention center, the older folk were embarrassed but decided to stay because they worked the door and not the inside event. For some reason, the show manager, a coked up control freak, insisted that each of them wear a name badge. I knew my staff would rather maintain their anonymity and requested that they remain discreet. We all had uniforms and were clearly employees. He insisted that every one of my staff had to have a name badge. Okay, each of them will have a name badge. I began printing them off for them. 83-year-old Gladys became Jenna Jameson. 78-year-old Stanley became John Holmes. 86-year-old Edith was Tracy Lords. I decided to become Ron Jeremy. The old folks had no idea who any of these people were. They were just happy to not have their own names. Attendees loved the name badges. The show manager was so coked out, it never even registered for him. To explain it clearly, if anybody out there doesn't know who those names are, they are the stars of cinematography in the field of that event. And our final story of the day is by Vaguely Artistic. Are you sure I can't have a bag? This is such a tiny offering, but as an older person who doesn't have to follow a lot of orders these days, and who loves cheese, it made me very happy to do this. There's a beloved Italian deli in my neighborhood. I've been going there for years and everyone knows me, at least to the point that they definitely recognize me. A few weeks ago, I went in and bought a piece of feta cheese. For those who don't know, feta is a funky sheep's milk cheese that comes in a salty and sticky liquid brine. 
You may have seen it sold in containers or without the brine, but this was a piece that was just a bulk piece cut in a slab and wrapped in plastic. So of course, a little bit of brine started to seep out as I got to the register. Because it was stinky and sticky, I showed it to her and asked if she had a little plastic bag I could put it in, the kind they'd use for a to-go cup of soup. I was clearly holding it by my fingertips in an ew kind of way. She says no, plastic bags are mostly illegal here. So I point to the hot counter and said something like, maybe they can give me one. And she said no, that's just for soup. So I took the piece of cheese, which I had been holding in my hand the whole time because I didn't want to mess up her counter, and just placed it down. She picked it up and immediately got stinky, sticky feta brine on her hands and the register. She had to stop to go get a napkin, but I bet she worked around that smell all day and had to scrub it off at night. Source was a cheesemonger and have cut plenty of feta. Again, just a little thing, but the point is to maliciously comply whenever we can. If their hands are tied as far as the plastic bags go, you have to understand because in some places the regulation on when you can and can't give a plastic bag out is pretty strong. That said, you would hope that they would be able to help the customer out in some way. That said, you would hope that they would be able to help the customer out in some way in this situation. Much unlike what they actually did. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.